Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense, and today I'm going over five different designer fragrances that I wish they would bring back, and also the reason why. Do I realistically think any of these will be brought back? No, but it would be cool. If you followed this channel for any length of time, you know I'm a big fan of discontinued fragrances. I collect them, I wear them, I like the exclusivity of them since they're not being made anymore and really hardly any people are wearing them anymore. In this video, I'm gonna have some more obvious ones that I wish would be brought back and some that maybe aren't quite as obvious, but I think still should be mentioned. And this is not the end all be all list of fragrances that I think should be brought back because there are countless fragrances I wish were easier to find, were easier to purchase. But uh, if I did a video that covered all of them, we'd be here until the end of time. So let's just jump into this and check out these five. Also, before I get started in the list, Luca Turn has started a YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link in the description to his channel. I've been meaning to bring this up for a while and I keep forgetting. I've actually followed his channel since it started. Somebody keyed me in that he had started uploading videos, so I've been, you know, lurking, watching those. If you want some really great information into the science of fragrances, check that out for sure. Okay, into the list. First fragrance, the most obvious one. Have to get that out of the way right away. Gucci Envy, bring it back. Bring Gucci Envy back. <laughs> Give me some Gucci Envy. I've got two bottles, both 100 mils, and uh, this is one I'd love to see again. So Gucci Envy is part of the big three discontinued fragrances, which also includes Gucci Rush and Gucci Pour Homme. All three of those are great. I'd love all three to come back, but Gucci Envy is my favorite of the bunch. It has ginger, incense, tobacco, vanilla, sandalwood, some of the notes in the fragrance. To me, it's just, hyper versatile great during the day great during the evening great casually great in the office formally whatever gucci envy can do it gives you a really nice sophisticated kind of uh, feeling when you wear the fragrance and unfortunately goes for just a boatload of money nowadays now i should say i don't think you should blind buy any of these fragrances if you've never smelled them and you go drop you know 200 plus dollars to pick one of these up you could end up disappointed i don't want that but if you ever see these out in the wild somewhere, maybe in a, a store that carries random fragrances, I know there are a lot of those scattered throughout the US, you may find one of these scents. And if you do, especially if it's for a good price, I would pick it up. Anyway, Gucci Envy was done while Tom Ford was creative director of Gucci. So those big three fragrances I mentioned, those were all done during the Tom Ford era. And then Gucci, killed them all. I know a lot of you have heard me talk about Gucci Envy countless times on this channel, so we'll just leave it there, but Gucci Envy, bring it back. Next up, a Dior fragrance in the Fahrenheit line. Uh, Dior Fahrenheit Absolute. And really, I think uh, Aqua Fahrenheit should be brought back too. I know they have Fahrenheit Cologne, but Aqua Fahrenheit is better than Fahrenheit Cologne is. But for this video, We'll keep it with Fahrenheit Absolute, which was introduced as the heir to the Dior Fahrenheit throne when it first came out. It's supposed to be taking the Fahrenheit DNA and making it more powerful, more intense. It has oud as one of the notes, and it's a great, great cool weather fragrance. There's also incense and myrrh in there, mixing with the violet, which of course is what really ties this in with the original Fahrenheit, the violet giving it that kind of gasoline vibe in the original. Fahrenheit Absolute actually was on one of my first top 10s. I think maybe the first winter top 10 that I did for designers. I could be wrong there, but I know I featured it early on in this channel's lifespan. At the time, you could still find that fragrance pretty regularly at discounters like Fragrance Net, Fragrance X. Nowadays though, sure can't. Dior has actually killed off a lot of Fahrenheit flankers over the years. Uh, they tried to give it a go with some summer Fahrenheit flankers for a little while. <laughs> it's like they, they were trying to do the whole, you know, cool water summer, low DC summer, Fahrenheit summer thing, but obviously that didn't work. Then they had Fahrenheit 32, Fahrenheit Absolute, which we're talking about today, Aqua Fahrenheit that I just mentioned. Uh, so they've, they've given a lot of these the ax. And if I could bring back just one, it'd be Fahrenheit Absolute. Yeah, that one was just a stunner for me. Great fragrance, and unfortunately now very hard to find. So while Dior right now seems to be more focused 
on um, Sauvage and Sauvage Flankers and then Dior Homme 2020, things along those lines. You know, I'd take a little bit of that old school Fahrenheit or kind of old school, not really. Semi old school, maybe that's what Fahrenheit Absolute would be. Yeah, give me that more intense, more powerful, darker Fahrenheit Absolute. Fahrenheit Le Parfum is great and I love that one but Fahrenheit Absolute does something different than none of the other fragrances in the Fahrenheit line did. I wanna see it back. Okay, next up is from Coach, and it's their leather line of fragrances. Now, Coach nowadays is known for Coach for Men, Coach Platinum, and now Coach Blue, which is uh, the worst of the trio in my opinion, but before those fragrances, they had the Coach leather line. Leather number one, number two, and number three. They got very imaginative, very original with the names of those ones. So all three of these leather fragrances have leather as a prominent note, obviously. Um, for the longest time, leather number two was not that difficult to find, even though they've been discontinued for a while. Leather number two, you could still pick up at a few different discounters. You could pick it up at eBay, for example, uh, pretty easily. But then leather number one, and especially number three, were pretty hard to find, and nowadays are even harder to find. Leather number one also had saffron, uh, citrus, and coriander. So leather number one was the one that was kind of the lightest, the one that was maybe a little bit more toward your warmer weather situations, as much as a leather fragrance can be. And then leather number two had pepper, it had thyme, it had rhubarb, it had musk. That one, was the one that was maybe the most versatile overall of the bunch. And then number three had Oris and Vetiver and Pink Pepper. Number three was the darkest of the bunch. Number three was the one that was most well suited for cool weather. Coach, of course, known for their, their bags, their women's bags, and also their leather wear, which is where this whole line took its inspiration from. And I'd like to see that come back, a nice leather line of Coach fragrances. Even if they made it their exclusive line or private line of fragrances, it could be interesting, at least more so than Coach Blue. Plus, it would give them a different line. You'd have your Coach for Men line over here and your leatherware line over here, and they could do two different things with them. Right now, all Coach has is those three I mentioned before, Coach for Men, Coach Platinum, Coach Blue. So I'd like to see this one come back. I'm a sucker for a good leather fragrance and I think Coach could pull it off. They've done it once before, why not try it again? Next up, a fragrance from Ralph Lauren, Polo Modern Reserve. This one had vetiver, suede, basil, and myrrh, some of the notes in the fragrance. And this is one that I think maybe you wouldn't need to bring back as a permanent entry, but I think you could do something like what Modern Reserve did as like a limited edition. This one was done as a 30th anniversary release originally, it came out in 2008. A lot of people have said that Modern Reserve smelled closer to the original Cosmere version of Polo Green, or just Ralph Lauren Polo. So a lot of people really cherish Modern Reserve. It's a, a discontinued fragrance that has a pretty good fan base. A lot of people still you know, seek that out, purchase it, wear it and a lot of people will tell you it's a big step up from where Ralph Lauren's Polo Green is now versus where it used to be. So my whole idea with this would be for Ralph Lauren's Polo to release a limited edition version of Polo Green, call it whatever you wanna call it, doesn't really matter, but try to do it in a way that is as close as you can get to the original Polo Green from yesteryear. Obviously there's been reformulation after reformulation after reformulation with uh, Ralph Lauren's Polo, Polo Green. And I think a limited edition release that really tries to you know, reach back in time and, and take what it used to be and present that again would be really cool. I know I would want a bottle, a lot of collectors out there would want a bottle. And I don't know if it would be something that you would keep permanently. You know, I can't imagine too many people nowadays wanting to re-up over and over and over again with that, but I think a limited edition it would do really well. So yeah, Polo, Modern Reserve, kind of, bring it back. And then last, certainly not least, Escada Magnetism, or 
really just Escada mints fragrances in general. Magnetism came out in 2004. It's the last big release that Escada did, at least as far as the fragrance community is concerned. Their last releases came in 2007, or last men's releases came in 2007. That was uh, Moon Sparkle and Sunset Heat. Now, those ones are fine fragrances, but they don't at all have the kind of cult status that magnetism does. Also, Escada Pour Homme was very good, and uh, Casual Friday was very nice, but magnetism seems to be the one that people get hung up on. This one has amber, leather, saffron, and tolu balsam, some of the notes in the fragrance, and it is still, as far as designer fragrances go, a very unique fragrance, and the presentation on it looks really slick as well. It is a fragrance that's heavily faked, along with pretty much everything in this list, but especially magnetism. There are fakes of that everywhere on eBay. I actually bought one once, but when I pulled it out, I was like, yeah, this is extremely fake. It was very obvious. Magnetism, just a fantastic neutral or cool weather fragrance for me. It's uh, an attention grabber, but it's not too overly loud. It's rich, it's got a little bit of sweetness in there. Really nice scent. And really, I would like to see Escada bring back some men's fragrances into the fold. So yes, magnetism is officially the fragrance that I'm featuring for this list, but kind of like with the Coach Leatherwear line, really, I'd just like to see Escada come back in general. They do make women's fragrances still, probably most well known for their yearly summer edition fragrances. My wife picks them up every single year, so <laughs> I'm very familiar with the women's Escada releases. Typically, they focus on fruity notes or tropical notes. That's really what Escada is known for now. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Some fragrances I'd love to see come back. Let me know some fragrances you'd love to see come back that have unfortunately gone the way of the dinosaur. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.